Today we're having a look at how Padre Pio responded when the Vatican, the ultimate authority in the church, silenced him. So do, do stay tuned to find out more about this. Hello friends and welcome to this channel following Padre Pio. Here we investigate the life of our great Saint Padre Pio, a Capuchin friar, a mystic, a tremendous miracle worker. So do stay tuned to find out what his life involved and what his intercession could do for you. We do also ask everyone to be part of the Padre Pio Apostolate. Be tremendous if you like the video and you share it with your friends, with your colleagues. And just a reminder, every Friday we have a Mass dedicated to Padre Pio. We bring your intentions to this Mass. All you have to do is enroll your intentions and you can see the video on the end screen. Now today we're looking at how Padre Pio was banned. So he's banned from selling Mass publicly and even giving spiritual direction to any of his followers. This, and this happened because there were many people who were skeptics of Padre Pio. They were skeptical of his miraculous stigmata, the wounds of our Lord on his hands and his feet, and they were envious of the attention he was getting from the thousands and thousands of pilgrims who flocked to the monastery. But also, some in the Vatican itself were worried about Padre Pio's fame, that perhaps it was based on a lie and then they would be seen to be given support to a false prophet. So that's how it was. And so multiple investigations were launched and they even planted secret listening devices to hear, to overhear Padre Pio's conversations. So, wow, can you imagine that? Even a great saint like Padre Pio not being exempt from being spied on, even though he spoke and acted plainly in public sight. So why did people spy on him? Well, here is the reason. There were a few among the hierarchy who were just hell-bent on catching Padre Pio out, who insisted that he was fooling everyone and that he indeed he was living a double life. So by any means they were going to prove this. And this culminated in an effort to move the friar to a different monastery. And then to forbid him as well from acting as a priest in any public manner. So this going on within the very bosom of the church, and it's still in its comparative heydays. And now we see how a furious mob descended. It comes to his defense. The local people were furious when they heard that he was being removed. And this is according to the biography, Padre Pio, the true story. Around 11 p.m., a furious mob descended upon the friary and they barred the door to a priest who they believed would take Padre Pio away. And the crowd wouldn't leave, it didn't leave, until Padre Pio himself spoke to them saying, My blessed children, now I implore you to listen to me, as you always do, and return to your homes without harming anyone. But this made it clear to church officials that Padre Pio could not be moved peacefully. Personally, I wonder, should we not thank God for this furious crowd that came to Padre Pio's rescue? Because without this, he may well have been reduced to nothing. Put one side and just left there to become nothing, an obscure friar. Obviously, old Red Legs was aiming precisely for this. And in instead, the Vatican now decided to change its strategy, to just restrict his faculties by removing him from public life. So they couldn't remove him from the monastery, so they were going to build a wall between him and the, the public. And the Vatican, obviously, to Padre Pio, the ultimate authority who represented Christ himself. And even in our Lord's day, the Sanhedrin, they were the authority, and our Lord submitted unto death. So that is how it is in these disputes in, in religious matters. The people appeal to the higher authority and he must speak. Now, the result of all of this, Padre Pio was just stripped of all the faculties of his priestly ministry. Except he was able to celebrate Holy Mass, but not publicly. He could not do this publicly, only in private. He had to be within the walls of the friary and not, not even in the public church, within the inner chapel, with no public attendance permitted. Naturally, this was a difficult cross for Padre Pio to bear. He had always obeyed to the letter, and this is how he was being rewarded. 
But Padre Pio obeyed, and this is how he is submitted to the decree. The superior of the monastery read to Padre Pio the decree, and the saintly friar responded, God's will be done, the will of the superiors is the will of God. And so we see that as soon as the legitimate authority from within the Vatican had spoken, so it wasn't some local authority or someone trying to impose themselves, but it was the legitimate authority. Then Padre Pio just accepted this was God's will without question, this was his fate. Padre Pio would spend the next several years in complete silence, celebrating Mass only privately, seeing no one, no visitors. He couldn't even write to his spiritual children. And now we see how he was a humble and obedient son. During this time, many came to Padre Pio's defense, submitting petitions, even writing letters, and even publishing books. Padre Pio was appalled by this response, perhaps because he was a member of the Franciscan order and he didn't want people within the order turning against him. But we can imagine if there was a persecution from within the order as well, how that would have worked out. And Padre Pio urged him to stop writing, and he wrote to the local bishop to assert his dissociation from them. I must repeat, Padre Pio said, that I am very disgusted by the unworthy behavior of certain false prophets who speak on my behalf, and they should stop this false and unworthy propaganda. But meanwhile, they have followed in their morbid fanaticism, not caring about the supreme authority of the church. I turn, therefore, as a son most humble and completely obedient to the Catholic Church, with profound humility, I kiss your sacred ring and profess myself to your excellency, your most humble and obedient son. That's how Padre Pio responded. And above all, even though these accusations against Padre Pio proved false, he, and that he, he would eventually be allowed to minister without any restrictions, Padre Pio submitted to the decree and remained silent, trusting in God's provident plan. So perhaps things are different today, but what if a priest were cancelled, I mean, in the middle of COVID or something, would he even be able to have put bread on the table? It would be the question how it would work out today. But observe this example of our great saint. Next time we will have another video on our fantastic Saint Padre Pio. So remember, our videos do come out every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday, always three times a week. And so do join us next time to see this video on Padre Pio.